So this is a video I've been very excited to film, I've been wanting to film for a very, very long time and that I'm very excited to be uh, making. You can tell I'm not excited because I can't even get the sentence across that I want to get across. In front of us is the rights bodied Volvo B10B Renown created by Studio Polygon. After years of development, hundreds and hundreds of hours um, of building on their side, numerous restarts in it when stuff may have gone wrong here and there, and many, many different variants created in that time. Here we are with the finished product. So he, the bus itself comes with around 20 different variations. Um, I'll clarify all of that. I'll link it, link where you can buy it from in the description below so you can check and stuff like that and see all the different variations. But it comes with around 20 different variants, reflecting some of the most major batches of beat and b renowns that have graced the streets of the UK. The vehicles um, have loads of different set valve opportunities as with the street lights and things and the street light model and other stuff like that. There is different set valves for each including destinations, um, sort of the cabs, interior layouts and all sorts of different things to personalise each renowned vehicle. The model itself is available for $17.99 exclusively on the Studio Polygon's website and includes a link to the free repaint pack. The repaint pack including base repaints, including some in some cases, like the one that we're driving here, lots of different variations of repaints for what these iconic batches of vehicles have worn. So you can instantly recreate whatever beat and be renowned, beat and be renown you wish. The ones that you remember, the ones that you've searched online and found iconic, or the ones you've seen in preservation. So in front of us is R918BOU, um, previously numbered with First West of England as a 66118. I'll tell you a little bit more history about the RBOU, the R Bow Batch, um, as we drive. But for this video we are in Cottrell, because Cottrell was built as sort of a semi-fictional version of Bath. It's pretty much Bath if you go there, um, and the route's just been made, like, the, the, it's been made into Cottrell, um, so obviously, so a few fictitious, minor fictitious things here and there can be done. But it is practically Bath, and it is practically the West of England. So I thought for our first video in this bus, a nice little stint up the hill to the university to see what the bus sounds like, to see how it performs, and to obviously um, relate a bus um, to where they were in real life, as we are doing with this. So yes, although this bus will have probably never done the uni route, um, I know full well that a few of these, again I'm not so sure if it was this one specifically, did do local services in Bath. I also know quite a lot of these initially were branded up for the X39 service, that runs between Bath and Bristol, I was going to use one of them, but these are ones I remember in photos, so I fancied using this. And plus, it is in an absolutely magnificent bar delivery that will hopefully be better seen when the um, sunset lights are properly on the bus. So to start it up, you have to hold the um, electric and the start-up engine buttons. You have to physically hold them. And the same thing applies with the doors. If you hold it in, it opens. However, if you just dab it, so let's say I dab the closed door button now, you hear it, but you have to hold it, like you do in real life. So with this one, as you can see, we've got to do it separately, because that's how the doors on this one are. Little things like that are amazing, and we'll have a look inside at the R, um, our bow batch of vehicles. Not all of them retain the headrests, they got one in South Yorkshire, 66112, and that had the headrest taken off in a refurbishment it underwent. But the majority of the buses did retain them to the end. So I'm going to get the vehicle set up, and we're going to run it as the 18 service instead of the U18, because that's how it, I believe, how it was back when this bus ran. And we'll get the, get the lights on. 
to come in inside. I need to toggle some buttons for the inside ones. Because I'm quite certain that there's a there's a button on the dash that does it and I fear it's behind the behind the is it that one? They're doing something, I can hear the lights, however I don't know where they are. It doesn't really it doesn't matter too much. However, it would be nice if we could obviously have them on, but this isn't always possible. At least we've got the front lights on. All the dash all the lights work and everything. And mu we must just take a second just to admire the um, sort of just the, the bodywork, the attention to detail on this bus. And we'll move, obviously we are going to drive the 18, so it automatically comes up with you 18, even though I didn't click that. I think the destinations are pre-setting, um, so that's why it's come up with you 18, and that doesn't matter as such. And what you can do is you can open the engine bay. I know that with some of the very, very old Hong Kong buses, um, you could actually see parts of the engine moving. Sometimes that can be a bit tacky to do, and um, can make a bus a bit laggier than it needs to be, especially when it's the majority of the time it's hidden. So this is just a picture. You can also easily open this, and if you see, if you look carefully, the animation on the button, the button slot comes out as well. Now if we move up to here, you click the top, so you have to push the, so I'll just zoom it in a bit more, so you have to push the top in, that closes, if you push that in like you do in real life, um, you can un untoggle it, you then have to click the button, and you can open the blind, it's a bit more impressive when you've got a roller, we will be driving one of them in the future, um, but you can open that as well. So with this one too, we've got the Hanover displays, so if we, so you can toggle it, you can put your numbers in and things that you need to. Unlike most others, you actually have the ability to go into letters like you do in real life. And I'm going to reset that because I totally messed that one up. So the only issue with these, and this is speaking from my own experience of having um, messed with these in the past, um, it does mean that if you miss yours, you have to go all the way around. That's not usually too bad when you've not got absolutely everything. So you go to the bus station, you can put the university up. Please wait, click your FE button, and there you go. That's your blind, and the blind should be back on. Super. So we'll go around. So the options you've got is um, just like some of the B10 BLEs, not all of them, but like some of them, you have the option of your first and your second gears instead of just going straight into drive. This can sometimes be fun for the following reasons. Because you get to hear the line a little bit more. So you, you can do that. Not all of them have that feature, um, just to note. So some of them have it, some of them don't. So that's something something to make a note of when you're choosing your model. Again, everything is done specifically, there's no generalisation. Every model is separate. I also do forget how long it is. The mirrors just like on most um, in hands in real life are absolutely tiny. That is someone stepping out, so that's my bus stop. Oh, honestly, I could not remember what stop it was. It's been absolutely ages since I've driven on this map. You do also forget how tight the bays are. So, with this, I presume you enter the module. So, let's try and find that. don't know where that's gone. So we have a duty there that relates to the dashboard, uh, the, the steering wheel, and you can enter the machine. We'll properly toggle the machine. Um, oh, there you go. Oh, well. That's cool. That is cool. Okay, I like that.
I feel there's a toggle button somewhere for that, and I've... I thought that was the lights coming on the bus. So there we go. What we'll do is because we've got somebody waiting and we are actually late, we'll let them on. I mean, I'm filming this during um, Freshers Week, so it, it doesn't matter. We can let them on for, to pretend we're doing a free run. I will have a proper look at the ticket machine cards. Um, in all honesty, as per usual with these, with these videos and um, when you've just got a bus I've kind of rushed into filming it because I have been excited for this however I'll ensure for the next video we do oh, very loud. I will ensure that for the next video I do have the codes um, ready with me um, so that we can run issuing fares and things but inserting that module is pretty phenomenal, pretty cool feature. And then we've also got the ticketer um, codes and things as usual. Because we're using, because we're using an older vehicle repaint, um, it's reflected that by giving us the older Wayfarer machine. It feels like you're going a lot faster when you're sat in the saloon. It feels like you're going a lot faster than when you're actually driving it. So the history to Renown's in Omsi 2. Um, it's something that we have to mention. Um, we can't. It's not, not something we can race over. Um, because um, we have had a history of Renown's. This isn't the first Renown for Omsi 2. However, it is the first official Renown. Um, the first Renown um, that we got was a conversion from Midtown Madness 2. Yes, we're going back that far. Um, that was the Renown was one of the first vehicles that the person who did the official converts with permission and all of that lot um, actually commissioned and released. It is quiet to say it's student, students back. Maybe I say that I am actually driving in, in, in game at half six, so uh, they're probably all getting ready to go on nights out. Probably why I'm quiet going in this direction. But yes, we had the Midtown Madness Renown. It covered us for a while back in the day that the UK side of things was. Cars all loading. This is just. Come on. There we go. This is just um, a bit of the map that takes a bit to process. And with a highly detailed studio polygon boss, as you can see, uh, it likes to take a little bit longer to process um, than it would with one of the less detailed vehicles. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have one guy up to the unit. Yeah, we had that and it worked for a while. It helped us set up the UK sort of left path maps and buses and sort of empire really um, over the over the past five, six years. Helped us set that up. And we then had a beat and Billy in development. Um, we had one um, created by an individual who no longer does only, only two stuff. I was one of the lucky people that he gave the vehicle to test and to show off. And it was always a work in progress bus. It was always a work in progress boss, so there were a few things that, that didn't work properly and it was incredible sluggish on hills. And now we're here. We've been promised this renown for a while and yes, it has been worth the wait. And the, the fact that this is just one of the many incredible variations up for grabs kind of gives you an idea as to what this add-on offers. Um, anywhere that you are in the UK there will be a variation of this bus that you can relate to. I also want to see where the sun is. Here. Not where... Okay, so it's... Yeah, okay. So, will that work? So, we'll check the... Oh, that's a pretty decent zooming view. Wowza. Okay. Um, that is... That's 
pretty amazing. Now I'm going to I'm going to do something a little bit naughty, but I'm going to just pause it like here so we can just admire uh, the side of this boss. Oh my goodness, mate. That is amazing. I'm really, really impressed. I love when you get a boss and it has perfect camera views. Oh, it is just the most satisfying thing. We're going to let you go because I don't want to clip that car. But... But yeah, the, with this bus, there is a variation of it that everybody can relate to. It's going to be tricky to remember to open those doors as, as I do. And that's what's good about it. Sometimes you get these buses that are so... sort of focused on one batch or one area that has them that they're just not relatable. You, you can't relate to them. And It was like one... Example of that is the Trans Bus um, Trident LX400. That's the bus that was modelled in the game is based on the SM53 batch. I was very, very lucky because the London United SM53 batch, um, a few of those members ended up with Shoreline Sun Cruisers, so I could relate to those buses quite well. However, if you're not um, in if you're not in Scarborough or you weren't in London when they were around. For you, the specification of the Trident, for most people, the see Trident with stagecoach, you just couldn't get the realism with the seats and the length and the destination setup and all these little things that just didn't didn't align to what you actually saw. That was a shame, but people model uh, what they see, and that was one. That was a let's make it breaks a bit. Bit more than I thought, but this is the thing people model what they see, and that was an example of that. However, with this, because Studio Polygon has a team behind him, he has all this sort of that is a taxi to the curb. Job. That's embarrassing because I'm nattering, um, and I'm getting used to these tiny mirrors. That's what I blame that on. Yeah, that didn't go as planned. But you see, because there's so many people, when there's so many people behind a project, so that they all have their safe up their own individual areas, this is what you get. This is the product of it. Where you get loads of different variations, expanded on by loads of different repaints, something that everyone can relate to, so that when they're driving that bus, they are driving their bus, they're driving something that they know, they've seen, they've travelled on. And that's the kind of effect that this this bus has where I'm driving an Arbo now, I've seen pictures of buses in this livery I've been on R912 bus 66112 when it was at First South Yorkshire there's also a repaint in here and I was debating driving it but I thought I better actually drive the West of England livery one in, in, on the West of England map They had the Huddersfield one from 66101, um, 66 that I believe it was, that arrived at Huddersfield for school services. They have the entire first Huddersfield school livery on it. Something that I will be driving in a future video, but I've got close to driving in this because I relate to that. I never saw that specific bus in person, but I remember talking about it, seeing photos about it. And that that's the effect that this this has. Did, this that. Heavy, heavy relatability with it. Oh, that sounds lovely. It's worth going through the gears just for that sound. So the sound I remember with the WDWXs, um, all the ones they ended up sampling in South Yorkshire and beyond. Very, very nice. Oh 
also goes really, really well. This is what I've all, I always loved about the Renown, is when it went, it went. There's no sort of building up to gear, it like, it got where it wanted to be and went. Always my favourite part of it. Why it's still popular with um, companies such as Transdev in Lancashire. Again, we'll be driving with that variation. Just purely because Lancashire routes, the long routes, they're not well funded. And the rural routes and, and services like that. And like the Valor Line, for example, that we did in a video recently. Because those sort of areas and things, they don't have the best like, kind of funding. The easiest way to keep them having buses is to give them sort of these... Oh, the, that was my bad, because I'm clicking three instead of two. Oops. And it's, it's just that, it, it's the idea that these fast paced routes, Clive Road, Blackburn, you are going fast and because the renown can get up to speed easily on, on flat ground and even on hills like this, it, it eats hills for breakfast. It means that they come on, I genuinely thought you were going to step out in the middle of the road then. It just means that they can keep these routes running into a tight timetable, keep them reliable with reliable buses. And it all works. It all works very, very well. Pretty much on time throughout the entire route. Do we have on the blind then? Let's have a little look. Let's put, I wanted to put something. I was, in all honesty, I was really, really hoping it'd have. What did I have thingy on it? I was hoping it'd have X39 Bristol. You see, I can tell you now, it might not be this ver variation of, of Renown, but I can promise you now that because of how nice his bus is, I will probably spawn in another variant of this vehicle and drive it down, back down the hill um, to Bath, as I call it, you know, cultural, but Bath Centre, because it's just such a lovely bus drive. Very smooth, as you can see there, reversing, there's no clunkiness in the wheel, it's very light. Very steady, the bus goes, the, the gears and the acceleration are accurate. The interior is pleasing, the repaint is spot on. Just all of it is just very, very nice. Just very, very nice to drive. And it it just it just makes it such a lovely vehicle. And yes, when you see something like this and you go, hang on a sec, it's eighteen pounds for a game that is about less than a ten or more. And you kind of think, oh my goodness, is it worth it? And then you look at it and you go, for all of the hundreds and hundreds of hours that have gone into it, just creating base bus, then creating all the different variations, then creating the set bars, then doing the sounds, all the different sounds of the of sort of variations, editing them together, all the people that spend hundreds and hundreds of hours creating all of these perfect repaints ready for the launch, the, all the different destinations, ticket machines set up, Everything together down to a T has been created by some by just some people that until it until it releases don't get paid a penny for it. Makes it worth it. Absolutely makes it hundred percent worth it. And this is the bus I'm going to be driving a fair bit of the next few weeks, so prepare for them in videos. I'll probably be mixing between this and the and B7 hourly eclipse because both of which are vehicles we have been wanting proper variations of for a long, long time and the two vehicles that we incredibly, incredible looker to have now.
So yes, uh, my review of the bus initially is done. Do stay tuned for a lot more videos of this vehicle. There are going to be other videos releasing. Do keep a look out for them. I'll probably insert the odd extra evening ones um, in and the extra weekend ones. So do keep a look out for them um, as we go into sort of this and next week. Because I want to try and want to try and get as many different variations sampled um, as much as I can. Um, because I'm going to be driving it and it's always worth um, being on camera so that you guys can enjoy the drive too. And also see all the, see all the sh shenanigans that I get up to um, while in the virtual world of Omsi 2. If you do wish to buy this bus, the bus is in the description below along with the link um, to the free to download map. The map is free. It's a lovely place to test new add-ons, especially with that massive hill to see all the work. And especially when you've got a bus in, in a first west of England livery that probably operated in Bath at some point during its life. So if you have enjoyed this video, and I really hope you have done, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the Andamore Central YouTube channel to, to support my content both in the simulation world as well as the real life bus industry. Please keep sending your suggestions for repaints, maps I should drive this bus on, routes I should drive this bus on, as I will be driving it a lot. Um, and all of that lot. As I say, please share to any of your friends who might be interested in watching the channel too as a support. Always means a ton from you all. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next video. Mate, goodbye for now. Bye.